Good morning. Welcome to Hope Fellowship of Somerset. We meet every Sunday at 10 a.m. We have fun, fellowship, we love on each other. If you're looking for a fellowship like that, we're the one for you. We're small but powerful. We know how to pray, we know how to seek the Father's face, and we know that he hears every word that we send up to him. Today is Sunday, October 4th, the first, October, uh, first Sunday of October 2020. It is now about 28 days before the election. We need to continue to talk to our friends, relatives, our loved ones. Get them out to pray. The, the left wants to take over everything and then they'll destroy our country. We cannot let that happen. Um, we must put on Yahweh's armor to be victorious. His armor protects believers during spiritual warfare. We have to be at the ready every single day from here on in. We have a revival coming, so we're going to face so much opposition from the enemy that it's going to be hard to slog through it. But we have to slog through it. We have to be victorious. We have to keep our armor on. And we have to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. If we don't do those things, if we don't fast and pray and intercede for our country, for our president, for the leadership of our country, we will fail. So be with us, walk with us, pray with us, intercede with us. And if you need a place to fellowship, join us. Father, your word is true all the time. We thank you for your word. We pray that it will permeate our hearts. We pray, Father, that it will magnify itself in us. And that as we speak it out, it will be spoken out in power, in life, in truth. And we will give you glory for all that you do and say in our lives today. We worship you, almighty creators of the universe. Well, <clears throat> in Yeshua's name, good morning to our friends in Uganda, Bayakumakuma, and all of your pastors who are under your leadership. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you will enjoy this sermon. You guys are experiencing your own form of spiritual warfare. For our friends in India, Pakistan, and Indonesia, we know that you guys are going through stuff. And we pray, we, we are praying for you, we are praying with you. We want you to be encouraged by this message today. So when you hear it, embrace it and thank the Father that Messiah is coming soon and very soon. Thank you, Patience Prince, for your, um, when you read my sermon, how it excited you. Uh, I thank you for your friends who you have following us. I pray that we will encourage them, especially as the last days are coming to their culmination. To our friend Gina Ryaski, keep your friends posted. There's going to be a bumpy ride over the next few weeks. Help them as uh, we are helping each other. For all others who join us that we know about and those that we don't know about, enjoy the sermon, enjoy the ride. It's going to be bumpy. It'll be like being at Six Flags or uh, Valley Fair, but it'll be worth the time spent listening to it. Mommy always makes me. A woman was taking care of her neighbor's little girl one day. She arrived in time for breakfast and sat down at the table. Mommy always makes me hot muffins for breakfast, the girl said. Eager to please, the woman went into the kitchen and prepared a, um, hot, fresh muffins for her. No, thank you, the little girl said when she brought the hot, fresh muffins to her. The woman was surprised and replied, I thought you said your mother always makes you hot, fresh muffins for breakfast. The girl replied, she does, but I don't eat them. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 is the scripture reading for this morning. Be strong. In Adonai and in his mighty power put on all of Yahweh's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of Satan the devil for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against the evil rulers and, uh, and authorities of the unseen realms against mighty powers in this dark universe and against evil spirits in the heavenly places <clears throat> therefore put on every piece of Yahweh's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be standing firm. 
Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and be in the body armor of Yahweh's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news message so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of Satan, the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Yahweh. Pray in the Holy Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persist, per, persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Okay, the sermon's done now, right? No, you're right. It's wrong. Um, it's, now's the hard part. <laughs> believers in America are going to face spiritual warfare that will be worse than anything they have ever seen in history. American citizens have learned that our president and first lady have been diagnosed with COVID-19. I believe they will be fine. The prophets have declared President Trump's re-election. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic in January, liberal governors in many states have taken advantage of their emergency powers, thus becoming tyrants and causing national chaos. The result is that they have sequestered their state citizens and caused a rise in drug abuse, child sex trading, child and spousal abuse, anger, bitterness, frustration, and loneliness creating vitriolic hate. We have witnessed many evil and demonized people creating chaos, <clears throat> destroying property, killing fellow citizens, calling for defunding law enforcement, and trying to assassinate police officers. There is plenty of reason for being concerned about this world we live in, but unlike unbelievers, we who have no hope, true believers have more reason to have faith to believe in our bright futures. As I talked about in previous sermons and the prophetic series on Teshuva, America is almost at the brink of destruction because of unholy legislation. That is why Donald Trump is the president. He was placed in office to drain Washington's deep state, its swamp creatures, and those who want to obtain power so that they can execute their Marxist, socialistic, and communi communistic tyranny. Again, there is no accident that there is devastating destruction being laid waste to liberal American cities. The unrighteous left is using Antifa, Black Lives Matter, and professional anarchists for evil. George Soros is a known political activist. He wants to destroy the America we love. He is seeking to replace her with factious and unholy Marxists, fascist, communistic, and socialist regime forces. These forces are driven by Satan, fallen angels, fallen archangels, and demons. They have given themselves over to these invisible enemies and are, will, and are willing pawns in the spiritual warfare we face. Now the good news. This is not and cannot go on. It is temporary, even though the effects of mass destruction may last for years to come. George Soros and his hordes will be put to flight. Isaiah 54.17 declares, no weapon that has been made to be used against you will succeed. You, will, ha you ha will have an answer for anyone who accuses you. This is the inheritance of Yahweh's servants. Their victory comes from me, declares Yahweh. Yahweh our Elohim, the triune creator of the universe, will not let their actions go unchecked. He will stop them and put an end to their nonsense and bring his hammer of judgment or justice on their heads. Deuteronomy 28.7 also declares, Yahweh will defeat your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but run away from you in seven directions. <laughs> Yahweh, the commander of heaven's armies, and his messenger, Adonai Yeshua, the Messiah, will remove them from his anointed president, his anointed people, and his anointed country. The United States may experience destruction if her leaders don't repent of their unholy legislation. There is a concerted effort by America's enemies to destroy her status as a superpower. There is hope for America even as we are discussing this. 
There are many in this nation praying that she will repent and be restored to the original concepts in her constitution that made her great, and she will be great again. Psalm 33.12 tells us, Blessed is the nation whose Elohim is Yahweh. Blessed are the people he has chosen as his own. We have been promised that if a nation repents of national sin and her leaders humble themselves to Yahweh, he will heal their land. Therein lies the final hope of America in these last days. The United States of America has been under Elohim's protection and prosperity from her inception. She has strayed from her roots, but a last day's revival is yet to come, and it will take place soon. Second Chronicles 7.14 proclaims to us, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray and search for me, and turn from their evil ways, I will hear their prayer from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their country, land, or nation. It is because of the violent and destructive forces of George Soros and supernatural battles that Jonathan Kahn and Franklin Graham moderated a new National Day of Prayer last weekend. Jonathan Kahn called for the return, the National Day, National and Global Day of Prayer and Repentance for September 26, 2020, 40 days before the election and on the last day before the Day of Atonement. This day of return, which is Teshuva, meaning to repent and return in scripture, centered on a large gathering at the National Mall in Washington, D.C., and was based on 2 Chronicles 7.14. Some of the most influential evangelical leaders across, from across the United States joined with Jonathan Kahn for intercessory prayer, repentance, and return to Yahweh from the desert of apathy. The Christian leaders were James, Dr. James Dotson, Pat Robertson, Ann Graham Lotz, Alveda King, Kevin Jessup, Gordon Robertson, among others. It was a day of intercessory prayer and repentance. Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son, called for Americans to join him in, Washington, in a Washington prayer march on September 26, 2020, to ask Yahweh to save America and for the president's reelection. The United States now has renewed hope for, of revival and restoration because the principles of her birth had their foundations in Elohim's written word, which never returns to him devoid of fruit. Millions of believers nationwide have bent their knees before the Father humbly in repentance, sought his face, and prayed for the healing of this, the greatest nation ever to be established. There are leaders in our nation under Satan's control. They are willing pawns of his to destroy this great nation. Her foundation is an Elohim and can withstand all evil when it rears its ugly head. Antifa, homegrown professional anarchists, Marxists, and terrorists, along with Black Lives Matter, another Marxist organization, used this event to cause destruction, death, and disaster. Black Lives Matter founder Patrice Cullors released a video of occult ritual. Released a video of occult ritual. She said she wants to abolish police while it curses them. While she curses them, it was their goal to cause law enforcement to be defunded. Over 400 law enforcement officers, from police to federal marshals, have been injured and 40 have been murdered since Black Lives Matter and Antifa began their demonic rage, uh, days of rage. Black Lives Matter occult foundations have been revealed, but it is spreading. Patrice Cullors is proud of Black Lives Matter's demonic roots. She calls Black Lives Matter a spiritual movement. The goal of these organizations is to destabilize the fabric of our Christian society and replace it with Marxism, socialism, and communism with the aid of lawless, unrighteous, liberal legislators. If anyone should believe that Black Lives Matter is more harmless than it seems, callers takes her ritual seriously. 
Her intent is perfectly clear in post-performance discussion with Melina Abdullah. Melina Abdullah, note her last name, it's M Muslim, is the Black Lives Matter Los Angeles director. She, like Colors, also believes she gets her power from and direction from the spirits of the dead. Black Lives Matter leadership believes they will be able to overturn the elections and redirect the political landscape of the United States by employing civil and supernatural war to accomplish it. As we have mentioned before, George Sub um, Soros is the puppet pulling the strings of Black Lives Matter, Antifa, uh, and defunding law enforcement in order to achieve their demonic war. He is a puppet master. He has destroyed many nations by destroying their economies, and he's seeking to do this again here. We cannot let him. We have to go and vote, everybody. We are seeing a civil war looming over America especially when President Trump is re-elected. Lawless activists declare they will assault rural areas and suburbs in the wake of his re-election. 2 Thessalonians 2.7 warns, For this lawlessness is already at work secretly, and it will remain secret until the one or she who is holding it back steps out of the way or is removed. We are in a war for our Christian nation against the unrighteous and unbelieving atheists of the last days. The very fabric of our society is being ripped to shreds because of our enemy Satan. We are pitched in spiritual battle against hordes of demons, fallen angels, and willing human <coughs> hosts who want nothing more than power to control humanity. They are building lawless strongholds. The strongholds are being used against believers, American citizens, and the United States with fear, frustration, and fatalities, which Marxists, socialists, and communists are using to control us. Marxist, socialist, and communist rule seeks to destroy Jews, Jewish and non-Jewish believers, and conservative citizens who live by the code of, unconstit or of constitutional conduct that Elohim instituted. We will miserably fail in destroying these strongholds if we do not employ Elohim's methods and heaven's weaponry to destroy them. This includes calling on Yahweh's angelic armies for help. Paul exhorts us in 2 Corinthians 10 to store up and use supernatural weaponry that our Messiah has provided for us in his word by Elohim's spirit and from heaven's powerful artillery. Paul uses military terminology to describe this as spiritual warfare against sin and Satan. Elohim is our commander-in-chief. Even our thoughts must be submitted to his control as we live for him. Paul said that he and, his, and fellow believers cannot wage war against evil dark powers in charge of this universe by using mere human plans and methods. If we do, we will surely face utter failure. And that takes us to the first point, which will come after I take my uh, uh, obligatory drink of my coffee. Our primary defense against spiritual assault is Yahweh's armor. We cannot wage battle in our own power, but only in the Holy Spirit. The warfare we must wage is only through the wisdom, strength, and weapons provided to us by Messiah. We are facing second heaven's principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, and authorities. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 6 says, We are human, but we do not wage war as humans do. We are, use Elohim's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing Elohim. We capture their re rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Messiah. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. As a matter of course, in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, from the life of faith we exercise in Messiah Yeshua, we find ourselves in the thick 
of spiritual warfare against second heaven's rulers and authorities. The second heaven's rulers and authorities are powerful, dark, and evil forces found in the ranks of fallen angels under the tyrannical rule of Satan the devil, who is a dirty and vicious opponent. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9 exhorts us, Stay alert! Watch out for your great enemy, Satan the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him, and be strong in your faith. Satan's war is a weapon of distraction from his vast arsenal, supernatural arsenal, to try to keep the believer off balance with fear as he walks in obedience to the master. He believes his roar will intimidate us. Amos 3.4 asks, Does a lion roar in the forest if it has no prey? Does a young lion growl in its den unless it has caught something? Lions roar only after they've caught their prey and not before. They are stealthy and powerful creatures, quiet in high grasses, and are called the kings of beasts in Proverbs. It is for good reason. Satan cannot prey on observant believers. He can only make unobservant believers think he can prey on them by bullying them with his roar, his proclamation of their abysmal impending defeat. To withstand attacks from these universal powers and authorities of Satan's demonic hordes, we must depend on Yahweh's mighty power, his angels, to bear his armor and heaven's weapons. Paul is not only giving this counsel to Messiah's congregation on the hall, but to each believer within Messiah's body of believers. Each member of Messiah's body needs to be armed for battle. As we wage battle against the mighty powers of this dark world, we must wage this battle in the full contingent of Messiah's congregational strength whose power comes from the Holy Spirit. We cannot even begin to enter into spiritual warfare until we have been prepared for supernatural battle. It is a militaristic discipline that finds its foundation in prayer, confession, and repentance. Sovereign Adonai Messiah Yeshua holds all things together by the mighty power of his command. He created all things and sustains them within himself. He alone is the victorious creator. Hebrews 1, 3, and 4 says, The Son radiates Yahweh's own glory and expresses the very character of Yahweh, and he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic Yahweh in heaven. This shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, just as the name Yahweh gave him is greater than their names. Victor victorious living is the result of an intimate relationship with Adonai, Messiah Yeshua, Elohim in human form. Our true victory comes through Messiah. He loved us and he who loved us and gave his life for us. John 16:33 exhorts, I have spoken these things to you so that you will have peace in me. You will not you will have suffering in the world, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Messiah proved his great love for us. He promised us overwhelming victory over our enemies. This should cause us to respond with gratefulness to him for providing us the ability for full victory. It is in his love that demonstrates we are victors over an unloving, hateful, spite-filled world held captive by the enemies of all humanity, Satan, his fallen angels, and their demonic offspring. Revelation 12.11 declares, They have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. This includes current believers. In all things, we are only victors through the immense power and blood of Yeshua, the Messiah, and the positive confession of our testimonies of our faith in him. Ephesians 6.10 tells us, Be strong in Adonai and in his mighty power. Paul encourages believers in this verse to be strong in Adonai and in mighty his mighty power. He refers to the strength we are granted from Yahweh, not strength we have human, 
humans have to somehow exercise. Zechariah 4, 6 exhorts us, It is not by force of human might, nor by strength of human resolve, but only by my Holy Spirit will you be successful in battle, says Yahweh, the commander of heaven's armies. We need Messiah's mighty power from his Holy Spirit to defeat Satan. Yahweh has provided our victory by placing his Holy Spirit within us and providing us with protective armor to surround us. The statement, to be strong, describes the continual empowering of Messiah's, for our Messiah's assembly. Yahweh's strength and power are part of the kingdom blessings available to Yahweh's children in Messiah. The, the power that raised Messiah from the dead is the same power that has been granted to Yahweh's children as they prepare for spiritual battle they must wage in this physical dimension. We must walk in the Holy Spirit's power to be prepared for spiritual battle. After we have learned to walk in the Holy Spirit, we must outfit ourselves with heavenly armor Yahweh provides for us. The baptism of the Holy Spirit provides us completely with the full power of Yahweh. He gives us full access to all of heaven's arsenal that provides for our overwhelming victory in, spirit, in spiritual warfare. The Greek word for armor is panoplia and means to be outfitted with a, with a full armor, complete armor for war which includes the shield, sword, lance, helmet, shin guards, and breastplate. The panoplia or full armor describes complete outfitting, head to toe protection, both defensively and offensively. The gear was created for hand-to-hand -hand combat in all of the spiritual dimensions. The armor of Yahweh was declared by the prophet Isaiah in the Old Covenant writings. Isaiah 59 describes Yahweh as wearing the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation. Isaiah 59:17 tells us, He, Yahweh, put on righteousness as his body armor and placed the helmet of salvation on his head. He clothed himself with a robe of vengeance and wrapped himself in a cloak of divine passion. Paul described that the Messiah's divine passion has provided for us complete head-to-toe outfitting from Yahweh to believers in the days of spiritual battle against the dark forces of second heavens. Ephesians 6.11 exhorts, Use all the armor and weaponry that Yahweh provides so that you will be able to stand firm against the deceptive tactics of Satan the adversary. <coughs> to stand against is a military term meaning to resist the enemy, hold the position. It is to offer no surrender nor retreat. Our only hope to hold our position depends on our use of Yahweh's armor. Excuse me. <coughs> and that will take us to the next point. The fullness of Yahweh is intrinsically connected to spiritual warfare. We need his power from heaven to wage battle in this dimension. We need all of Yahweh's heavenly armor in order to provide all the protection we need to stand firm against the strat all strategies and tricks of the adversary, which is Satan the devil. Our adversary, Satan, does not fight fair. He's a dirty fighter. He will use his dark arsenal of eternal weapons of distraction, deception, and confusion in conjunction with spiritual warfare strategies. When everything is said and done, we will have no victory or success in spiritual battle without Yahweh the Father, Yahweh the Son, and Yahweh the Holy Spirit. They provide heaven's armor. We face a very formidable and invisible enemy, army I mean, of fallen angels and demons, whose only agenda from Satan is to infiltrate our fellowships and defeat Messiah's congregations from within. Now I'm going to go off script here. We've had that happen here. We've had people come in and destroy our fellowship. We've had people come in and split our fellowship. They were all infiltrators. They weren't true believers. They were sent by Satan, whether by knowing outwardly or not outwardly, outwardly and they have made it very difficult for us to grow. But we will grow. We will pre prevail. We will be victorious. Ephesians 6.12 informs us, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, 
but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against all evil spir against evil spirits in the heavenly places. These are the evil and fallen angelic armies of the second heavens, which contain principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, and authorities. These are the names translated from the Greek. By virtue of our relationship with Yeshua the Messiah, as we walk with him by faith, Satan's hordes become our enemies and try every dark weapon to turn us away from him and back to sin. Messiah's followers are constantly fighting against dark forces of evil. This verse describes spiritual hand-to-hand -hand combat against over an overwhelming enemy. But with the right weapons, we can, and I'll say here, we will prevail. We're not waging, war, uh, uh, waging a conventional earthly military campaign. Our battle is not waged against flesh and blood humanity. Rather, it is against in invisible armies attacking us from spiritual realms. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, Satan, who is the false god of this universe, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They do not understand this message about Messiah's glory, who is the exact image of Yahweh. Satan rules this dimension from the realms of darkness in the second heavens. The kingdom has taken strong opposition to Yah this kingdom has taken strong opposition against Yahweh. All spiritual battle and warfare takes place in the second heavens. There is a host of spiritual forces arrayed against us requiring us to employ Yahweh's full armor. They are real and powerful beings, mere fantasy not mere fantasies or inventions of a fiction, fiction writer's fancy. Satan's weapons are not physical, but can manifest as physical weapons and help from, um, with help from willing pawns. The dark warriors of the second heavens use its bat evil battle technology against us. Our enemies are not merely flesh and blood enemies, but are fallen angels and demons over whom Satan the devil rules. They are not mere fantasies. They are very real, dangerous, and powerful. We face a powerful enemy from the second heavens whose goal is to defeat Messiah's assemblies. When we put our trust in Messiah alone for salvation, we gain these dark entities as our enemies. Fallen angels and demonic hosts of the second heavens are blatantly waging war on Messiah's saints. Our defense has to be waged using heaven's arsenal for spiritual warfare for us to prevail. Although believers are assured of victory, we must still engage in spiritual warfare until Messiah returns. Satan's army is constantly in battle against all who are Messiah's true followers. Satan's weapons of warfare have been the same since he tempted Eve. His weapons of warfare are distraction, deception, and confusion. They can bring fear to those unprepared for spiritual battle. The powers of the second heavens have been revealing themselves to humanity for centuries to condition it for la the last day's great deception and warfare that will follow into the tribulation period. Ephesians 6.13 says, Therefore, put on every piece of Yahweh's armor, so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Believers' response to the reality of this warfare should be to use every piece of Yahweh's armor. This heavenly armor is available to all believers, but each believer must be at the ready to use it. We wouldn't, would be neglectful not to be armored. All spiritual warfare is real. Satan's targets are placed squarely on our backs. Satan is very good at sending his sp spiritual projectiles against us. Only by being clothed in Yahweh's armor can we stand firm in faith. Paul declared, after the battle you will still be standing firm. This describes standing firm against overwhelming enemies. Yahweh's armor is not delicate. It is very powerful and balanced. It is designed for hand-to-hand -hand combat against forces of darkness and for taking back the land that the enemy has stolen from us. And to the final point, we need to put on every piece of Yahweh's armor. 
The order for our spiritual outfitting of Yahweh's armor is listed in Ephesians 6, 14 through 18. Firstly, we must fasten the wide and sturdy belt of truth around our waists, which holds our, ar holds our armor stable from the middle up and the, and the middle down. This belt for the armor was about six inches wide. Ephesians 6.14 says, Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of Yahweh's righteousness. When utilized with proper discipline and diligence, our weapons of warfare are invincible. Yahweh provides them for us to keep us stable and able to make a stand, and make a stand firm in the midst of battle. The belt of truth is Yahweh Elohim's word. It is the in Yeshua in which our armor is intact. Without his word to hold our armor stable, we will fall flat before our enemies rather than prevail over Satan. James 4, 7 declares, Humble yourselves before Yahweh. Resist Satan the devil, and he will flee from you. This belt holds together the clothing underneath the armor, as well as holding the remaining pieces of Yahweh's armor in place from neck to foot, including the breastplate and the sword's sheath. When our enemy Satan, who is the father of lies, attacks us with his lies, half-truths, distractions, deceptions, confusion, and distortion of Yahweh's word, we can stand firm in Messiah's true word. Secondly, we must put on the body armor of Yahweh's righteousness. First century body armor was a large leather, bronze, or chainmail piece that protected the body from neck, the neck to the thighs. This body armor is what protects vital organs, such as our hearts, which in, the, in Greek thought was seen as the midsection of our bodies where we would feel the stress or blessings of emotional upheaval. Yahweh's righteousness provides us with powerful defenses. It is evidence that by faith we have been made right with Yahweh. His righteousness has been infused in us by His Holy Spirit. Thirdly, all believers must are called to carry the good news message of Messiah to the sinful world in our sphere of influence. It is the good news message that brings peace to those who receive it. Ephesians 6.15 tells us to tells us for shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news message so that you will be fully prepared the Greek word for peace is based on the Hebrew word shalom which means to have a sense of completeness soundness welfare peace quiet tranquility contentment and fr friendship the Greek word for peace is irene and means to have a sense of security, safety, prosperity, especially of Messiah's peace, and the way that leads to salvation through Messiah. Another word for shoes is better rendered tactical boots that come from the good news message that we preach. Tactical boots are worn by law enforcement and soldiers to protect their feet. Believers need the tactical boots of peace that comes from the good news. Good news. Today we would say that our tactical boots are forged from the powerful good news message of Messiah Yeshua. Even though we are in the thick of battle, maybe even for our lives, Messiah gives us peace that overcomes the world, the flesh, and Satan the devil. We are given peace of mind and heart. John 14.27 promises, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So do not be troubled or afraid. Peace is one of the benefits that when, when we share the good news message with those who have not heard it and put their trust in Messiah because of the power of his good news message. We can stand firm in peace, in Yahweh Shalom, even during hand-to-hand -hand combat because our testimony for the good news makes us overcomers in Messiah, not the overcome of the enemy. Fourthly, each soldier must carry protection in the form of a shield, especially for believers who are in the midst of spiritual battle. We need the shield of faith to protect us from the enemy's arrows. Ephesians 6.16 warns us, in addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. 
For believers, the shield is made of faith, a complete trust in Yahweh and desire to do his will. Our Creator's armor was never meant merely to be put on as a show for others, but for spiritual battle. When Satan, our enemy, the ruler of this universe, sends his fiery arrows of temptation, doubt, anger, lust, despair, and vengeance and troubles at us, we can raise our spiritual shields of faith and stop them. Fifthly, without an armored helmet, we leave ourselves vulnerable to attack and possible defeat in battle. Messiah's helmet of salvation um, is our best and first protection against Satan's fiery arrows. Ephesians 6.17 exhorts us, Put on salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahweh's word. With the assurance of salvation in Messiah protecting our minds and hearts, we can stand firmly against Satan when he or his fallen angels go on the attack and assault us spiritually and physically. In fact, without Messiah's salvation, we have about as much ability to conduct spiritual warfare as a water pistol is able to shoot down an American F-35 stealth um, aircraft. It just can't happen. Sixthly, each believer must take up the sword of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahweh's word, which incidentally is the only offensive weapon we make use of in the entire armor of Yahweh. Romans 10, 16 and 17 reveals, Not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah the prophet said, Yahweh, who has believed our message? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing by Yahweh's word. Faith comes by hearing, or from hearing, and hearing by Yahweh's word. Elohim's word works bo as both a weapon of destruction and a scalpel of healing. It gets to the deepest corruption in our lives and removes it. Hebrews 4.12 says, For Yahweh's word is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cut in between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. The Holy Spirit uses Yahweh's word as a two-edged sword, which is used as both uh, an offensive and defensive weapon. It is only effective as we speak it out by faith and receive it through hearing it. Yahweh's mighty Holy Spirit gives his word its penetrating power and razor-sharp edge. Yeshua's use of Yahweh's word during his temptation encourages us, our use of his word to defeat Satan. When our enemy Satan tries to tempt us with evil, we have the power to defeat him by using Yahweh's word. Messiah promised that his Holy Spirit will provide us the power we need from his word. Finally, the foundation of Yahweh's armor is prayer. Prayer stabilizes Yahweh's armor. Spiritual warfare without prayer is, is, is as its solid footing is about as possible as barbecuing a snowball on a grill. Ephesians 6.18 exhorts us, Pray in the Holy Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Praying in the Holy Spirit gives us assurance that he helps us when we pray when we do not know what to pray. The Holy Spirit prays on our behalf. The Holy Spirit makes Yahweh accessible. A habitual prayer life is built and ordered around seeking Yahweh's desires for our lives from the applications found in Elohim's written word. Intercessory prayer is the foundation of his power. The most powerful revivals of all times were successful only because intercessory prayer warriors sought the Father's faith, face for their families, loved ones, communities, and countries. In conclusion, we are moving to unprecedented spiritual warfare this world has not seen since the days of Noah. We were warned that the days of Noah leading up to Messiah's return would be as destructive as Noah's. We were warned by Messiah that persecution of Yahweh's people, Jews, Messianic believers, and non-Jewish believers would escalate in the last days leading up to the prophetic ingathering event. The year 2020 revealed organized violence and destruction escalating from Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Some believe it was organic, an organic response to George Floyd's death. It was not! America and followers of Messiah, Messianic and Evangelical Bible-believing believers are in the crosshairs of Black Lives Matter and Antifa under George Soros' manipulation and directives. 
George Soros is a traitor to his people, the Jews, who he wants to exterminate along with Christians from all across the world. He wants a one world government for the coming anti Messiah's rule. He will not succeed until believers are in gathered into heaven to be with Messiah forever. His machinations will not will have to wait until after the next great revival and World War III takes place. We are still seeing World War III looming in the Middle East between Israel and her Islamic enemies. Even though the president has orchestrated three historic peace treaties, they will not last scripturally. In the meantime, all believers across America will be attacked in one form or another. Our country's constitution, her amendments, and her Bill of Rights are going to be under attack by liberal activists. We must prepare for these supernatural assaults to take place after the November 3rd elections of this year. No matter how the elections turn out, Satan is prowling like a roaring lion to attack. We need to be ready to meet our enemies both in the physical realms and in the supernatural realms. America's civil war is going to be as much supernatural as it will be physical. We must prepare. We must prepare. We must prepare. Make sure you have enough provisions to weather out the coming supernatural and political storms that are looming. Pray. Vote. Watch and wait for Yahweh to be our victor supernatural and naturally. We who believe have hope. Our Master and Savior, Adonai Messiah Yeshua, will descend from heaven and remove his rapture-ready bride before the prophetic world events attempt to destroy her. In benediction, 2 Corinthians 4, 8, 9. We are pressed on every side by troubles. We are, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by Elohim. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Yahweh has blessed you and will protect you. Yahweh has smiled on you and will be gra has been gracious to you. Yahweh has shown you his favor and will give you his shalom, perfect and complete peace. Amen, amen, and amen.